Hello, good afternoon. It's uh, very nice to be here. Uh, uh, I was asked to come here to, to talk about uh, my career, uh, my success, or what I uh, think uh, uh, success is. Uh, first of all, how many of you play tennis? And, oh, it's never, never too late to start. But anyway, let's, uh, let's start uh, uh, about my career. Uh, I just want to go through a little bit. I, uh, this, these are the, uh, the achievements, uh, what I find uh, are my, uh, my best. Everything started uh, when I was four years old uh, in a small village uh, called Masku. Uh, it's uh, close to uh, 20 kilometers from Turku. Uh, my parents were playing tennis, not on the top level, uh, but they played in a weekly basis and uh, they were coaching in the local clubs. So it was very natural for me to to try tennis, and uh, I did that uh, uh, among many other sports, uh, mainly ball sports. I, when I was a little kid, I did about ten. Ten, uh, I was uh, well, I had ten different hobbies, and they were all sports, uh, ball sports, uh, football, tennis, uh, uh, well, ice hockey. I just name it: badminton, uh, basketball. Uh, just loved uh, running after after the ball, and apparently uh, when I was uh, four years old, uh, I hit my first uh, uh, first uh, strokes, and uh, somehow I, I found tennis uh, most interesting. I, I always that that was like number one sports for me, and uh, uh, I just wanted to to be better every day. I just wanted to. Then when I started to compete, when I was uh, seven years old. I went to the first competition. I uh, I started to well. I, uh, the big thing was to to improve every day, and uh, I just wanted to beat all the opponents I played against, and that was pretty much my only goal on, mm, until the last day of my career. Uh, when I was a kid, I never had a dream or goal to be a professional tennis player. It kind of happened. I. Uh, Mm, I was always best in my age group in Finland, and I and like I like I already said, I just wanted to be better tennis player and beat better players. So I I had to practice more, and then I had to leave those sports behind, which I didn't care that much. And suddenly I had only two, three sports left, and it was only at high school when I, I first time started to think that maybe I could actually have a uh, have a career in, in tennis, or at least try. And, uh, and then, uh, when I finished my high school, uh, I supposed to have I supposed to concentrate and focus one only one year uh, for tennis, do nothing else, and figure out during that year what I would like to study later and uh, when I'm going to the military service, etc. And then uh, during that year, I I played so well, I I started the year. Uh, about 330 in the world, and in the end of that year, I was sixth in the world. So in one year, I broke through to those uh, uh, big, biggest tournaments in tennis. You, it's uh, very common to say that uh, top 100 is the is the top level. It's kind of a tennis players NHL. When you get to to top 100, then you can uh, play uh, the biggest tournaments and. Uh, among the best uh, players, and it was actually, I don't want to, there's a lot of stories behind these achievements, but I don't want to waste too much time uh, on that, uh, but uh, just to name a few, uh, this Boys US Open 99, that was uh, the, maybe the first time that gave me the confidence boost, that if I can beat the best, uh, best uh, juniors in the world in my age group, maybe I could do that uh, in the men's uh, series as well. And uh, after that, I had two more years at high school, and then, uh, then uh, yeah, of course, I think I'm most proud of uh, to be uh, 13 in the world in the sport, uh, which is played uh, by uh, 70, 80 million people in the world and played almost everywhere in the world. So that this this feels uh, that felt pretty good to to get uh, that high. I, I could never dream dream of that. Uh, then I want to uh, talk about uh, my strengths, also my, my weaknesses, and uh, how, how I got to, 
2013, how I got uh, the success uh, uh, I had. Uh, first of all, I think success is uh, really relevant. Success is uh, uh, in everybody's own head. Uh, why I think I succeed is uh, that, uh, or overall, uh, success is, I think, uh, getting the maximum out of your potential. And I honestly think that I, uh, I got uh, everything out of this body and mind in tennis, what I could. And that's why I'm, I'm very pleased what I, what I did. Uh, and uh, it's... Uh, uh, it's uh, like some pe some people for sure uh, think that uh, my achievements are not uh, like nothing speci uh, special or uh, not uh, some kind of success. Then there is uh, for sure people who think that uh, my achievements are uh, in incredible success or something uh, between those. For example, when I was 13 uh, in the world uh, at my career high ranking. I had a journalist uh, who asked me his first question. Finnish journalist, he asked me like, when uh, when I'm when I'm getting to the top level in tennis, and then I was like, wow, like I, I don't like because I, I thought that uh, if this play, sport is played by 80 million people and I'm number 13, I'm kind of at, on the top level. So I had to ask him again, like, well, what do you mean? And then he. He meant that when I'm when I get to top ten or top five, and then like okay, now just th then I could answer the question, but it felt pretty strange first to to get that kind of question. But it, it's it's nothing wrong. I mean, it's also he he could think that the 13 is far from uh, from the top. That that's totally fine. But the point is that uh, what I find uh, that success is that you get uh, everything out of yourself and. Uh, during the time and the work you you get that you also enjoy what you do i don't i don't find it great success if you are three in the world and you you find it uh, like uh, you you don't enjoy what you do i don't know if you read uh, agassi's andre agassi's book but uh, that, that's a good book but he he had a kind of a love and hate uh, relationship to tennis and that was very surprising for me and i don't know if if, if even though he was uh, he had way better like achievements, uh, what I had, he won many grand slams and won, was the best player in the world at that time. I mean, if you didn't, if you don't enjoy that, I, I don't really know if, if you can call that success, even though he was an incredible player. But then, to my to my strengths, I uh, I had uh, uh, one big big thing. I had a huge passion for the game. I think uh, to get any kind of success in any area. You have to. You need passion because it it needs to get uh, good in mean, something. You need a lot of work, a lot of hours, and if you if you don't have the passion, it, it's really tough. And I, I really had the same passion uh, during my last match of my career. I still felt like a little boy on the court, the same guy who I was when I was, for example, seven years old when I competed uh, in my first tournament. So uh, th then you, I, th then you don't have to count those hours. Like uh, I, I pr for many years, I practiced uh, four hours of tennis and two hours of fitness. Then just you just basically eat between, and then you sleep, and recover. And if you don't have passion, of course, it's tough to do even for a week. Uh, other other things I had, uh, I had uh, good. I had really, a, really a strong will to improve, like I already mentioned, that was my only goal, to be better every day. I never had a, a ranking goal. Uh, I don't know, I think that's maybe uh, not too normal among athletes, but I I never, uh, I, I would honestly pretty much focus pretty well to the work itself and not to the, uh, not to the uh, ranking. Of course, when I got to top 100, I wanted to be top 50. Then when I was top 50, I wanted to get top 30 and top 20, top 10, and so and number to number one. But I never thought that I like uh, I want to be top 100 in the end of this year. I I pretty much could focus to the game itself, and I think that helped a lot. And uh, of course, if I uh, when I was able to improve my game, uh, the ranking uh, got better uh, at the same time because I won more matches. Uh, 
I think if I was good in one thing, I was uh, really good uh, getting 100% out of me every day. I put, uh, uh, sounds a little bit cocky, this uh, word exceptional, uh, at least for a Finnish guy to say. But uh, I, I, because I put it there because all of my, my coaches told that. I think I, if I had something special that was good in me, that I could really uh, get 100% out of me every day. Sometimes the quality was, was worse, sometimes it was good, but at least I had the attitude uh, uh, to, to get uh, everything out of me. Uh, I also had a strong belief and a good understanding uh, of myself already at, at young age. Uh, I, I remember uh, times when I was 12 and uh, my, my coach uh, tried to change my technique in the forehand and I was really, really like uh, hard-headed. Uh, uh, I, I, I could, I, I had totally different opinion and I was only 12 years old. But that kind of describes that I had very, very like strong view about my own doing and game, even though I, I was, I had no clue about uh, anything else. But uh, at, at that age, but I think that helped in, in the like, during my career. I had strong belief what I was uh, doing uh, and uh, doing things in my my own way. I think I was easy to coach uh, in uh, in a way because I. I had a really good attitude, but then, as I said, I was pretty like hard-headed. Uh, it was very, very hard to convince me to do some something that I, I really, really didn't feel convenient. And maybe I paid a little bit price later about that. Um, that I, I always didn't didn't believe what the coach uh, told. But uh, uh, then I can uh, also honestly say that, uh, well, first of all, I put tennis in the four different areas. It's physical, mental, technical, and tactical. And physical, in physical, mental, and uh, tactical side, I think I was uh, among, well, one of the best in the world. Then on the te uh, technical side, I wasn't that great. And I think that was one of the difference, differences that uh, I, I didn't get, to, for example, to top 10. Uh, I didn't have like that bad technique, but when you play on the top level, it's like I didn't have, uh, for example, my serve. I struggled a lot with my serve. Uh, when I was 13, I, I, I think at least 11 of those guys who were in head of me, they had a better serve. And uh, that was mainly because I didn't focus uh, too, too much to my serve when I was a, a teenager and so, so didn't my coaches at that time either. And then I paid the, paid the price later. Uh, I had, had to always serve like thousands of serves to, to be able to at least like maintain a kind of okay level comparing those guys who were in top 10, top 10, top Top 50, for example. Uh, then I uh, had uh, <laughs> extremely high standards. What comes to tennis, I was demanding really a lot uh, uh, from myself, and I I found it uh, like I'm pretty pretty. Uh, it's it's uh, hard to say about myself, but I find myself quite easygoing off the court, but. Uh, then on the court, I'm really like hard-headed, demanding a lot. I was demanding really uh, a lot, uh, everything what was related to to tennis, and I, I really didn't make any compromises uh, to be able to be be best uh, best possible. Uh, but then when we when uh, we get to my Weaknesses. Well, I already mentioned uh, one stroke and the technical part comparing those other top players. But then uh, my, I find the biggest weakness by far the same that I, I just uh, mentioned in the, on the strength side. I, uh, that I had extremely high standards. I had a stage in my career that because of ha having these high standards and I was de demanding a lot from myself, it, it went like I was demanding way too much from myself. I wasn't satisfied, like game-wise, I wasn't satisfied uh, 
uh, of anything. If I played really well, that was how it's supposed to go. And if I if I played okay or d played bad, what happens many time many times during the long tennis season, uh, then I got to this kind of a negative uh, bubble, which was uh, really tough to get out of. And I really had to find tools to, to work with to be able to control those feelings. And, uh, and then I had one coach who really helped on, on that side. He, uh, he learned me to, to like how to focus to the right things, even in the, in the tough moments. Uh, even though I was ex already a pretty experienced player, those feelings were so strong that I, I could, when they came, if I got negative, if I played bad, got negative, or if I was a little bit nervous, I couldn't co control them on the court. So he, uh, then with this coach, I started to prepare. I had a certain preparation every single match, and that with that mental preparation, I could uh, and. Uh, awareness what might happen i already like first I, I had to be honest that this is my big weakness then to be aware that this can happen any day even though i for example had two weeks two good weeks under my belt i had two good tournaments i, I can't go to the court without uh, preparation because then when these feelings come they are so strong that i can't control them but then when i prepared uh, in advance before the match then when i I started to feel that now they, the feelings are coming, I, oh, I start to get to this negative bubble. Then I, I could uh, uh, use those uh, tools and uh, focus to the right things. My coach, coach uh, this uh, German coach, he, uh, he was very good uh, teaching me what are the right things uh, for me at a certain time. They might be different this week and uh, of course there are main things that are important for me or someone else uh, all the time but then some like depends how you play. Sometimes I struggle with the with the backhand, sometimes I have a, a better confidence, sometimes um, I move better. So they change but I always had few goals before the match and tried to keep focus in those goals and uh, he, <laughs> it's uh, still in my head how this uh, he, this uh, German guy, he always said before the match and already he reminded uh, during the match, he was always saying, like, do the right things, just do the right things, just do the right things. And it sounds really easy and also pretty naive. Uh, but it actually needs not a, a lot of knowledge and many times a lot of experience to know what are the right things uh, for you. I mean, it doesn't matter what you do in your job, if you're, I mean, for sure there is uh, right things for you to do every day to get the, uh, the maximum out of you. And he was really good, uh, like, uh, helped me to realize what are the right things for me. And then it was pretty cool to, when I was able to do that from the start to the finish, I could be very satisfied. Like before, I was kind of a, guy who thought that, okay, a loss is a loss, a loss is a bad, win is good. And of course, you play for the victory, so win is a good thing, because even if you play bad, at least you, get, you go forward and you get a chance to play better in the ne very soon in the next match. But uh, it's not... Uh, I, like before I started cooperation with this guy, I had many wins. Uh, this was also my weak part. I got... If I... If I realized after the beginning that I can, uh, I, I'm going to win this match most likely, uh, unless I totally screw up, uh, then I tried to beat the guy as uh, bad as possible, like 6-1, six, 6-1, one, six, one, and playing, uh, playing the wrong way. And of course, it's, in a way, it's good, but uh, that didn't bring me forward in the long run. Instead of like, playing, uh, following my game plan, which was something different, and and win the match 6-3, uh, 6-3, six, three, six, three. Well, who cares, you still win. That, but you play, you did the right things from the start to the finish. That, that, that brings you forward in the long run. And I had a lot of matches that I won easy, but I, I played totally wrong. And that didn't help me to improve at all. So uh, what I was saying, that it was cool to even... I, I had some losses that I could, after the match, I was... 
I got, of course, disappointed. But then, like, I went through with with this coach, and then later I didn't need him to tell me that I I knew that I I actually did the right things from the start to the finish, and I have to be satisfied because I can't do more. I mean, this day, I mean, it's not it's never nice to lose, but sometimes the other guy is better, and today he was maybe better. And I mean, what can I do more than uh, than try to do those right things? And it was. Uh, like latest with him, I, I like my goals were uh, always in the work itself, not in the result. Uh, like I've wrote there, uh, the result is just the outcome of the effort you put into it. So that means that uh, you can't control the result, but you can control your effort. And then uh, it was like uh, it was nice to enjoy the effort that I could do, do uh, every day. And then with him, I basically, uh, like after the, the beginning, when we started to work, I was able to do it in uh, almost in uh, in daily basis. And and when you have the goals in the work uh, itself, uh, the goals are very practical. It helps you to live in the present moment, which is, of course, very important in tennis or, or life in general. Uh, for example, in tennis, if you think, if you have played bad, uh, in the last uh, last tournaments you played, you, for example, if I lost two, four, three first rounds in a row, and I'm I'm thinking about that too too much, I'm thinking about the past, and immediately that takes something away from my my confidence, and of course it doesn't help my 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 performance uh, in the present moment, or if I'm leading 5-3 in the third set and I, I'm, I start to think like okay please come on now just hold one more win one more service game and you're gonna win the match then I'm thinking I'm going already in the future which hasn't happened yet instead of thinking how I play the next point and if I can focus to that next point how I play that I most likely uh, got get the best out of me and then uh, more likely uh, more likely I win the one more game and I win the match. So those uh, those things were huge and they can this kind of thinking I uh, can be used almost in uh, almost in every areas of uh, life or or work. Uh, I'm talking about uh, uh present moment my my life after tennis I I quit uh, I finished my career uh, 2015, and uh, I got this question about a thousand times now that how 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 it's been hasn't been tough after after you played for 16 years uh, professional and the life must be so different and of course it's different, but I I honestly had absolutely no problems to start this uh, next uh, chapter in my life I think mainly because. First of all, I I could play much longer than I I ever dreamed of. Uh, secondly, I finished healthy, so I could finish in my own terms. Uh, then uh, then I could uh, I never uh, thought my oh my identity was never built around the sport or tennis or wins or losses, and that's what many many athletes do. They they feel that when they do well, when they win gold medals or whatever, they feel that they are better persons. And then when they do bad, they feel they are very down, and they feel they also like they are oh, like worse persons. But I never that had never nothing to do like my success or playing terrible. Did uh, they have nothing to do with uh, who I am? And of course, if you if you live through that, if you build your identity through that, then when you stop. Then, then you don't you don't know really uh, who you are. And I read a lot of um, I, I, I know a lot of uh, ex athletes, and I read interviews, and they they tell like for in the beginning I didn't know who I am, and I'm like to me it's okay, it's not surprising because um, that's uh, I'm sure they have uh, like a little bit uh, lived through the sport uh, too much, but uh, like I, I, I it has never nothing to do uh, like who I am. And that's why it has been really easy to enjoy this uh, uh, this time of uh, life. 
uh, also uh, thanks to tennis, it's uh, easier to put put things to right perspective. Uh, I got to travel uh, only because of tennis. I got to travel to or to see over 60 countries. I saw a lot of different things, a lot of different cultures, a lot of different things happened. I met a lot of different people and. Uh, and I really, when I'm now, I live in Finland here in Helsinki, I, I really enjoy how, overall, how, how good things are here. Uh, some things that uh, I think I would take it for granted if I would not have seen uh, something else. So th those things are, of course, very, very valuable, uh, more valuable than any, any victories uh, I had. And also the same skills same skills that I used uh, uh, and learned uh, during my career uh, I, I are as well used uh, in life in general. I, I put uh, uh, some of the most important here, uh, like problem solving, stress tolerance, goal setting, giving 100% uh, whatever you do, time management and taking responsibility. Those were of course, big things uh, uh, during my tennis career, but uh, and I, I wasn't that great in. Uh, well, still uh, I can improve in in, uh, in a few of those, but I, I think I have learned a lot in those areas during the career, and now I can uh, use them uh, in uh, different areas of life, and uh, I still uh, still. Uh, like I put <laughs> my, my success continues. I don't mean that I, like I, th this means that uh, the, the success, how, how I find that, uh, what I said in the beginning, I, I, I find success that you, you try to be better every day, you get maximum out of yourself. And now I, I just try to live a successful life in that way. I try to be better every day, live in the present moment as well as possible and uh yeah enjoy life so uh basically the same same things that uh were present all the time uh, during my career and uh yeah i tried to not not to talk too much so we would have a we would have a time for some questions i'm happy to answer whatever you uh it depends what you ask but almost whatever if you have a if you have some questions, just uh, please ask. What do you do today? Today, I, I do still, uh, well, I do tennis things, not uh, play myself, of course. Uh, sometimes I do, but not uh, active anymore. I, I commentate for Finnish Eurosports, the biggest tournaments, uh, four Grand Slams. Then I, I, this year I started as a Davis Cup captain, which uh, means that I'm guiding the, the national team. And then the uh, third thing I do, I'm kind of uh, mentoring and sparring some of these younger Finnish professionals. So three different uh, tennis things. I really, really enjoy what I'm, what I'm doing. Nice, cool things I do. What makes you play floor ball? What, uh, they invited me uh, out of nowhere. I had a... No, well, I said not more than w I played basketball. I, I, well, that was uh, that was maybe the sport I liked uh, the most after tennis. But I didn't, I never really practiced, or nobody ever coached me. And then I played tennis for 16 years, and so I, I played floorball once a year. But then uh, I was after 2015 when I quit. Our first child was born, so I had a, a little daddy holiday, and then I got a phone call. And they invited me to play floorball in the highest level, and I was like, "Okay, again, I I, I have to run, but uh, let's do it." It was such a such an interesting uh, sport challenge, so I had to say yes. And during that time, I I hadn't committed to anything uh, yet. Th these tennis things, for example, I do now. I think we at that time we lived in Denmark because of my wife's job, and we were I knew that we were going to move, move uh, to Helsinki in a few months, so it suited pretty well to my my planning. I didn't have anything like job-wise anything planned yet. 
or anything. I hadn't committed to anything, so I wanted to try. But then, uh, then my uh, it basically finished. Uh, I, I could basically do it for three weeks. I, I started to the thing. Now it's a long answer, but I <laughs> I get this question a lot. Uh, they, uh, I didn't do anything for four months, and then when I got this fo phone call, I started to. I didn't even play floorball yet. I started to run again. I go. I went to the gym, and then I started to get pain in my heel, and then later I started to get pain in the other heel out of nowhere, and then uh, the timing was bad because I had just said yes, and I didn't want to. I wanted to try, and I, I had m maximum painkillers, and I went practiced with the team for for three weeks and then I couldn't walk anymore and then uh, and then I played only three games and uh, then I had a surgery for both uh, heels uh, but yeah lucky I, I stayed healthy almost uh, like basically the whole career so it's that, that just le like tells you that you should <laughs> never stop doing sports I think that was the only difference I did uh, uh, I, I did nothing for, like, comparing what I did uh, when I was playing active tennis. I did nothing for four months, and then I think some, some, somehow the body reacted. That but would have been nice to, to play. I mean, I got, got to taste it a little bit, so I think it would have been, would have been good. And I still enjoyed the time I, I spent there. No more questions? Uh, nicest. Well, it's always nice to test you against the top players, but uh, on the other hand, it's tough to beat them. So you, often you end up losing. So you kind of, uh, it's maybe like game wise, it's one of the top guys you have beaten because that's it. That's how you get, yeah, have you got your better, best wins. But of course, like a guy like Federer. Uh, I know him since a little kid, and he's the best player ever. To to challenge myself against him, it's always a nice experience, even though I never beat the guy. So, oh, sorry. On the court. On the court. <laughs> yeah. More. Some somebody from the back? No. Yeah, there's few good talents, young talents in Finland. It's uh, still not a not the biggest sports in Finland, even though it's one of the biggest in the world. So we never, or hopefully, in the, in the sometimes in the future, we have many, many, many talented. But uh, so far, we always had uh, like uh, only only few, uh, yeah, few. Um, but uh, it looks the future looks um, pretty good. There's few who can really break through to the top. We'll see. They are still pretty young. If there's no questions, then I want to thank you. Thanks for having me and, and listening to me. Hopefully it wasn't too boring. Go and play tennis. Thanks. <laughs>